So yeah. Hey everyone, it's your boy Ethereal here. I know this whole drama thing about Endgame has been sparked by this latest interview, and I just felt like I needed to put my thoughts out there, so let's just um, quickly go over my takes, my opinions on the whole thing, and let's just look through the interview because I haven't really read the full interview, but I had a rough idea of what they say. So, this article here by GameSpot, apparently uh, they interviewed um, Hoyo vs developers to talk about Endgame content and just Genshin related stuff in general. So yeah. Uh, this one's nothing much here, just uh, version 3.0 to 3.2 being um, shortened to 5 weeks, now nothing big to cover there. Now this is probably the biggest part. So what they said, okay, so they said Spiral Abyss is the only true endgame for players at high AR, are there any plans to release more new permanent content, endgame content with the same vim as Spiral Abyss? And to this their reply is basically, um, they, they acknowledge that Abyss is the best way to test your party composition and strength, and they say that if they design more permanent endgame content that is um, similar to Spiral Abyss, it might end up creating ex excessive anxiety to players and not everyone's interested in the thing. So they unveiled the TCG card game, in case you guys don't know, it's in the live stream for 3.2 I think? Actually no, yeah, they, 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 I think they revealed it in 3.1, not 3.2 actually, but yeah. So I guess, um, let's just cover over this really quickly. So. I think why people are upset is because Genshin's combat, right? Genshin's combat is just generally like really really satisfying and I think one of the main reasons why I really enjoy playing the game and playing my characters, uh, playing Genshin compared to say other gacha games is that I actually get to play my character and the combat is really really fluid, it's um, incredibly fun. So you know, most people are molding because they're saying, oh, they, we won't get more permanent in-game content like Spiral Abyss or whatnot. And I think, hey, here's how I see it. So, right. Now, let me open my Genshin here for you guys. So basically, the reason why I feel like, I think you, I probably have a 50-50 kind of, I'm kind of half-half about this entire thing. So basically, if you look at characters, right? So you think about it, you just rolled the fancy new 5-star. Let's say I have my Ayaka right here, Ayaka right here, and then, um, yeah, you, you, she's like level 1, and now you gotta farm your materials to like uh, level her up. And then you're like, okay, I want my, to make my character stronger, so what do you do? You farm EXP materials such as a Hero's Widow Mora, you give them some good weapons, and then you level up the good weapons to level 80 or 90, depending on how far you want to take it to. And then of course the final step is to lev uh, leveling up artifacts and whatnot, and just battling through the RNG. Maybe sometimes if you're a bit lucky or you have some money, you can get consolations, and of course you can level up all their talents, right? So, I think the reason why I feel like uh, I, I probably dislike that uh, that part where they say they won't release more content like Abyss is more in the sense that like this entire game, right? The whole thing around getting characters, playing them, and leveling up your character, so character progression or your account progression is to get stronger, better artifacts, better weapons, and better and strong, and make your characters better and stronger. And the whole purpose of that is related to combat. So obviously Spiral Abyss is like the end game, it's like super tough and whatnot. But I feel like the way that they say how like they won't develop more things like Spiral Abyss, I half agree with it in a sense where Abyss does get stressful even for veterans like me, mostly because of the timer and how ridiculous some enemies can get based on the uh, scaling. If you guys don't know, the enemies in Abyss get, get a 2.5 times HP scaling. So it's basically like the amount of health that a singular enemy in Abyss has is basically the same as um, an enemy in the overworld with four with a four player co-op, right? So yeah, for me, what I think about the entire thing is that it's best to not for them to not disregard combat completely because like if they don't release more difficult content, I wouldn't say difficult content, but just generally just more combat based content especially in endgame part, I think it basically invalidates your purpose of spending resin, farming level up materials, leveling up weapons, making your character stronger. It just becomes kind of, you know, pointless past a certain point in overworld. So I think there needs to be some sort of justification for that, but I don't think it has to be abyss. And I guess for the second thing, right, is um why I do agree in the sense that Genshin compared to Hoyo versus other game, Honkai Impact, is definitely the more of the casual part. Because I have played Honkai Impact before, and one of my friends has actually, he's still playing Honkai Impact, and Honkai is highly centered around combat and end game content, and it gets really stressful at times, especially when you try to make do with like 
your your gear that is completely F2P and you, you didn't get lucky in the gacha to get their best stigmatas or their best weapons and, and something like that. So you sometimes they put a timer on the end game, the abyss thing, and you can't beat it and you feel frustrated. I can understand where the anxiety comes from. But I think for Genshin, right, I think it's perfect. I think it would be nice for Hoyoverse to just release more combat related content. It doesn't have to be end game and maybe it does, we don't really need rewards or whatnot. So it, it really depends because um, uh, that, that's another thing we'll talk about later. So yeah, I, I think generally I'm kind of like half, I half agree and I half disagree. I disagree in the sense that it's, I don't think we should completely, I don't think Hoyoverse should not release any more combat based end game or combat based permanent content in the game. But I agree in the sense that we don't really need more Spiral Abysses. We just need more variety, more options or more choices. Maybe with some nice rewards if they want to really want to put it there. Or maybe it's just like a for fun mini game, you know. No, one way or another, we just need more choices so that both casuals and veterans are catered to. Okay, let's moving on. Let's move on to the next one. So Genshin Impact is going to year two with more expanding roster. Some older characters get left behind as power creep settles in and newer characters become much stronger choices which i honestly highly disagree in this case but you know it's, it's, just, it's just a question so not, let's not think too much about it so is there a plan to place to potentially upgrade all the characters and make them more viable and obviously they say like it's assessed in single dimension numerical strength power creep is indeed an issue but in Genshin impact the rules are more impactful on how strong character is new barrel grounds new challenge levels and even new teams all have potential to bring in new life to existing content to me, I don't think they need to nerf um, all characters. Like characters like Hu Tao, Xiao, Zhongli, um, Venti, they're still relevant to this day, but I don't think any post Inazuma characters are really falling off either, like Raiden or Ayaka. So I think it's perfectly fine. But I think the issue is not a matter of making current characters stronger or nerfing older power creep characters, but rather, I made this in the video, I'll leave the cards in the description of like what makes a good character in Genshin. You know, characters like Lisa and Barbara where they create a problem and they sell the solution and there are certain quality of life issues that these characters have or it's just, it just makes them very difficult to play, very... It doesn't feel very rewarding to play them and, and there are other characters that can literally do the job better for literally the same amount, the same numbers or the same amount of damage. So I don't think all the characters should really be buffed or nerfed. I do think that whatever characters that are lackluster from the very beginning, especially a lot of characters from like a lot of four star characters from uh, uh, early release in 1.0, 1.1 onwards, I think they can receive some sort of quality of life treatment or some nice changes to their passives or or how their uh, kit works so to make to make them just play better in general. So yeah, okay, moving on to the next one. The introduction of Dendro has created new ways to cause some other reactions, but some elements are left out. Obviously, they mentioned Geo. Uh, Geo and Dendro. Maybe not Geo. I think he meant Geo and Anemo. Actually, no. Anemo is fine. Could there be a new Geo and Dendro reaction? We have no plans for the time being. With the release, it's become complex. There are other ways to increase the fun rather than increase the complexity of the game rules. Honestly, I think, yeah, I think this is fine. Because to me, I think Geo right now, everyone acknowledges that Geo is a really, really bad reaction. Because um, I didn't really make a video on this, but from how I see Genshin right now, right? I think the strength of an element is completely dependent on their reactions. Like, like before the release of Dendro, right? Electro used to be really weak. But now that Dendro exists, and now we have things like Hyper Bloom, Quicken into Aggravate or Quicken into Spread, Electro has suddenly became more viable. Or rather, Dendro kind of saved Electro. So I assume the developers developed Dendro in mind. With They developed Dendro with the idea that they want to save Electro. So I think it's perfectly fine. Geo is still bad. Aside from Zhongli shield being super strong and he just happens to be of the Geo element and Geo, res Geo resonance just generally being kinda good, it's still a bad element so I am quite interested to see how Hoyoverse wants to you know, fix that or make it better in the future. So yeah, what else do we have? The world of Teyvat continues to blah 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 blah. Is there a chance we see a cap increase in original resin? The lands are important to farm and and you need to claim this reward. You're providing more options to obtain character development items. Maybe can be obtained and redeemed from events we run periodically. Honestly, yeah, I completely agree with this. I still think that um, in a world where Genshin gets infinite resin, people will just play the game for like 12 hours straight to max out all the characters for a non-existent end game or just a pointless end game. And <laughs> it's like people are just gonna basically just they're just they're just gonna spend like one week straight playing the game 12 hours a day. 
spamming artifacts because of that because of that's how bad the RNG is. And I think, you know, Genshin is a gacha game that's meant for people to, you know, just log in, play the game for 10-15 minutes, and then log out and go about their day. And I think that's perfectly fine. I don't think getting more resin will really fix any problem. I think uh my belief to this is that we need more ways to obtain resources outside of resin alone, which they are they you know they have addressed over here. So that's good. Events and uh, events and world quests and whatnot do does give a significant amount of uh, resources to develop your characters, such as Mora and like uh uh character EXP, I think. So yeah, I think that's good. New players may have been lost starting out uh, summertime Odyssey because they miss Fischl and Mona's introduction. Scaramouche, blah blah blah. Is there is the team considering a way? Is the team considering adding a new way for players to see or replay old story events? We are aware and we're looking solutions for it. Okay, that's good. Stories from limited time events shall never become barriers to understanding playing Argon Quest. Well, obviously. On the other hand, we're looking for beginner tutorial adjustment. Okay, client capacity optimization, intelligent management of past content, and other optimization. Okay, so yeah, I think I think that's all right. I think the biggest gripe with um this entire thing is that there's a lot of like story-based content that newer players or players who are too busy to kind of play the game will kind of miss out on and that kind of gives you this like FOMO kind of thing that I think most people will not like. So if there is some sort of way to just watch like a just go in the game and maybe like play a cutscene or like just kind of like a summary of everything or maybe just like you cut out all the gameplay part but like you just put all the cutscenes and all the different like dialogue events and just compress it into one like 10 minute video or 10 minute cutscene that you can maybe watch in game. I think that would be nice, I guess. I mean, you, you don't really, you'll really miss a chance to play it, but I think it's better than just missing out completely because I'm pretty sure everyone knows that missing out on an event story or having story that is tied to events is, um, yeah, it's, uh, it sucks. I understand the reasons behind it, but why the reasons behind why they don't like put things or just make it permanent, but I think we need some way for newer players to just find a way to kind of relive the experience, you know? If, it, just for the sake of it. So yeah, we got costumes. How likely is that Traveler becomes recipient? Ah, Traveler skin? We don't have anything to share, but we're always considering new ideas. Okay, cool. It's like that freaking Lumine leak skin or something, or like the Aether and Lumine skin, where it's like, it was leaked during Christmas or something, but it's just kind of like a art kind of thing. So yeah, I don't think there's anything else. Uh, Hoyo vs is working in Honkai ZZZ. We wish to channel more creating characters from the world of Genshin Impact. So yeah, um, that's the whole interview. So I guess let's just spend a little bit of time to talk about the whole end game thing. So like I mentioned just now, right? I think to disregard new combat based content, end game content is um. It's not exactly good because like I said, you basically basically by doing that, right? If they don't add anything new or they, they don't spice things up or whatnot, you're basically disregarding all of these resources. If you look at all these resources, like in the character development item slot, this is a character EXP material that you need to level up your characters and all these other materials are like different common ascension materials. And then we have the, the boss talent levels, the boss drops or whatnot. And uh, yeah. And obviously all these different talent books and all these different weapon assets. So I think it's not good to completely disregard combat in its entirety, but it doesn't mean that the end game, the new end game based content has to be as intense as Spiral Abyss. I think it, we just need some sort of alternate version of it that is less stressful. Uh, whether it has rewards or not, I think it's completely dependent. We, I think we just need to consider more options before we think about anything. And I was watching a video from um, a Jeff that one time, right? So like, if you think about the different types of players in Genshin, aside from uh, dividing the casuals into the veteran hardcore gamers like myself, I think there are two types of players in Genshin. Uh, number one is the ones who would go into the game for things like story, right? Because they really like the story. And they are also roughly the same type. I mean, I wouldn't say they're the same type, but yeah. Maybe I should divide it into three actually. Okay, let's divide it into three. So, Player number one comes into Genshin for the story because you know story is immersive. It's been getting better since the Sumeru patch, so I'll give Oyoverse that. Just give them credit for actually listening to player feedback and getting better. And player number two, or type number two, is the ones who kind of saw the gameplay of Genshin 
big and they came over from um, they really like the exploration puzzle based gameplay from Breath of the Wild, uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So they wanted to get like something again, and not to mention the game is free. So yeah, they are the exploration type, and then the final type are one such as myself, where they're combat freaks or their 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 enjoyment is derivative from combat. Because, let's be honest, the combat in this game is actually just really really good. It's really fluid. The idea of how each... We have like seven different elements and each element has like their own reactions which which works well depending on the characters and depending on the enemies that you go against with and like how there's things like um, uh, elemental resonance so like maybe you don't want to mix too much. Maybe you just want to have like two of this one element or two of the other element to kind of help your team. So yeah. It's um really it's really intricate. So yeah, I, I think I think at the end of the day, right? So how do I say this? You know what? Let me not go to the conclusion yet. So let me just show you guys like what Zajef said, I think, or what I do agree with in what is considered to be end game content. So as a gacha game, gacha game you have dailies. And does dailies you know daily commissions? Just a nice simple chores for uh, 40 gems 40 gems for all 4 commissions and 60 gems if you claim. So yeah, in a sense dailies are technically one form of endgame because if you're only here for puzzle and exploration, you don't really need to do commissions. And the second thing right that I can uh, kind of show you guys, I think it was right here I believe. So the second thing that is also basically post exploration or endgame-ish or whatnot is bounties and requests. I'm in the wrong area. <laughs> But yeah, I, uh, bounties and requests. I think the bounty and request system is perfectly fine. It fits both casuals and veterans. Uh, but I think the only the only gripe I have with bounties and requests is actually just um, just more options, I guess. Like maybe we can get a bit more requests, but I think it's perfectly fine right now. Uh, bounties, I think people just want uh, an extra high difficulty that's a bit more difficult. But I think it's um. Otherwise, I think it's just perfectly fine. We just need more options. And of course, we have the one and only Spiral Abyss, which is uh, located right here. And yeah, Spiral Abyss basically, it refers to floor 9 to floor 12, which is uh, the four floors that resets every week and the rewards that you gain also reset. So the Spiral Abyss, I believe, resets only on the first of every month and the 16th of every month. So yeah, floor 1 to floor 8 is the kind of endgame content that you can basically do anytime and that's not it's just regular abyss so not really spiral abyss so yeah let me let me let me go to floor 9 show you guys there you go abyssal moon spire and then it has all these different blessings and then it has all these um uh, summaries and reward previews and you can you can get more gems and, and mora if you get more stars i think it, i think the abyss is kind of fine as it is but i think if they really want to release more endgame based combat I think we need more that is similar to Flow 1 to Flow 8. Uh, that's it. And maybe like, yeah, something similar to Flow 1 and Flow 8, where they are, well, let's, how do I say this? Basically, it doesn't reset. Everyone gains the rewards the same, and maybe it's a one-time thing. Or maybe they can make it refresh with like, no strings attached, no rewards. I, I don't really know, to be honest, so. But one way or another, right, I think this entire debacle, this entire shenanigan about in-game and how everyone's being disappointed, I can see where they're coming from. But I believe that I, we need to consider the op options. I think Hoyoverse just has to like start releasing more permanent base gifts, uh, permanent based content, and it doesn't have to be Spiral Abyss. We don't want more Spiral Abyss, or else is, this is gonna end up like Honkai Impact, which has like three to four, three different Abyss that resets every week, and there's like open worlds that reset, and there's so many things to do that. I remember the main reason why I started Honkai was to start the story and I, I've always been overwhelmed by the freaking endgame. So yeah. So yeah, I think I think that's my whole take on the entire thing. So TLDR, um, Hoyoverse shouldn't disregard the combat. I think we need more op options in general so that way you don't, you don't cater towards the casual players alone or the veteran players alone. You can cater from them both by giving them more options and looking into the feedback on whatever new things that they added. So yeah, well, at the end of the day, it's, it is what it is. You only give some Primo Gem and honestly, spending money in this game is not worth. I'll probably make a video of like Welkins and Battle Pass soon, but yeah. So I think that's it. Uh, this video ended up being 20 minutes. I'm too lazy to edit my freaking 
me messing up my goddamn speech because that's just how I am. I, I talk too fast before my brain actually processes what I'm trying to say, so it is what it is. Anyways, uh, this will be just a short video. I won't edit too much. I'll probably just add some music in the background, so yeah. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this whole interview thing or what your take on this whole all the different parts of Genshin is in the comments down below. Give it a like if you enjoyed the video, give it a subscribe, leave a comment if you got any opinions to contribute. I think I would love to read your comments and just kind of start a conversation because it's been really fun. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!